Imagine a classroom full of kids, aged 8, 12, 16, you can choose. The teacher is teaching a normal class of maths, geography or Dutch, when suddenly a young man comes barging into the classroom. He is pushing forward his enormous black box on wheels. And he starts this speech on how he's a de detective and he is investigating a big fight that's going on in town. The children immediately see that there's something weird about it. They don't know how to react. Some giggle, some try to provoke the young man. He reacts calm but convincing and carries on with his story. This is the beginning of a theater play played in the classroom about theater. In less than an hour, two actors uh, show the children what theater is about and make them really feel how a story can capture you even when you are in your classroom, just like you are every day of your young life. Today I want to tell you about theatre, about the necessity of theatre and about stories theatre helps, helps us tell. He has been uh, uh, named um, many times now, Sir Ken Robinson. He pointed out that theatre is all the way on the bottom step of our educational ladder and that is a shame. I agree with him on that one. Because theatre is all around us. Everyone who uh, had a speech here today is performing. When you are trying to make a good impression on a job interview, when you are trying to convince people of your point of view, even if you are trying to tell a good story at Christmas dinner, it's all some sort of theater. When I was living in Paris, I used to take the metro on a regular base. And it struck me that all the people I saw there made a dip different impression on me. So I started wondering why. I started looking at them and looking at their attitudes, how they held their heads, how they held their hands, how they, their back was uh, arched or straight. And I started copying what I saw and watched closely how people would react. Now, you can all guess the results, how different reactions were on an arched back, crossed arms, eyes looking down, from a straight back, arms relaxed and an open view to the world. Theater helps us observe ourselves, helps us understand how we portray ourselves. It's like a mirror. It offers us the chance to look at ourselves and hopefully laugh very loudly or at least smile. Theatre is about raising questions without the necessity of producing answers. Theatre is about opinion, about taste, about experiencing things. Theatre is about doubt. It's important to cherish doubt. And that's only one side of the necessity of theatre. The other side is the stories theatre helps us tell. In our world, telling stories is an important part of our communication. Stories are personal. Stories contain emotions. Stories leave an impression. Stories are remembered. Stories tell us a lot about ourselves, how we see the world, and about the values we cherish. Myself, I am passionate about exploring the intersection between theater, welfare, and education, and the stories that can be, to be told uh, over there. I love making theater because it is perfect to tell difficult stories. There is no right or wrong. You can present different views. With theater, you can tell all the interesting stories of life. Fictional stories are true stories. Stories about the history of the place you live in. Stories about the different languages you encounter. Stories about social issues like lover boys, sexuality, drug use. Stories about communication problems in the office. Stories about bullying, about talents. Almost anything is fit to tell stories about. Almost anything can be used to make theater. Theater that sticks. Theater that starts the flow of emotions and of thoughts. Theater that is the beginning of change. I've been making theater this way for 10 years now and I have experienced the results. As an example, I'll tell you a story about a play of ours. It's about girl, boys and it's played just for girls. It's called Boys, Boys, Boys. 
And in different scenes, the girls see a boy hitting on a girl. Of course, there's a lot of giggling going on during this play. In between every two scenes, the girls are asked to grade this boy. How perfect is he as a boyfriend? Halfway through the play, he always scores well, very well even, eight or nine to 10. He is not, uh, of course he's not perfect, but he's sweet, he listens, he gives attention and he gives presents. He doesn't get a 10 because he has some issues, but he has explained them and the girls understand. By the end of the play, the boy turns out to be a lover boy. He abused the beautiful aspects of a nice boyfriend to make the girl dependent on him. Of course, the score now drops down to zero. But looking back on the scenes, the girls realize how a lover boy works, what tricks he uses, what lies he uses. I wouldn't fall for that is something the girls can't say anymore. They just gave this boy an eight or even a nine. We tell the stories of companies, of schools, of society. And by doing so, we give them a chance to look in the mirror and ask questions. And by doing so, we try to connect all of them. We try to build bridges. One last example. We give companies the chance to support a school ne nearby by giving them a theater play as a gift. They give a story. A story that matters, a story that enables questions and doubt. Thank you very much.